Praise the Lord. Hey, well, hold on. We'll wait for Charles. Come on right up here. There. How'd that work, Joel? Pretty good. One, two, three. Raymond can sit right in front of him. Wait. There you go. Okay. Anybody else need help getting seated? <laughs> All right, we have a graduation this morning that's going to be a real uh, blessing, a real blessing. So every time somebody graduates, they get a little group of people together, people that have loved them and walked them through this program a little bit, and they get up here and they pray. And I like to be able to, in my head, I always picture them praying right there, because when they leave, I still like to remember them praying right there. And no matter what they do out there, the little bumps that they hit, I always remember them praying up there because that gives me faith all the time. And I think that is important. So Joe and Marianne, come on up. Or Joe, come on up. Where's Marianne? Oh, okay. Now tomorrow morning, this Marianne up here is, is gonna have a little surgery. And so everybody uh, be remembering her. So is that okay that I announce it? Okay, you're not going to dye your hair or nothing like that tomorrow. Okay. There you go, brother. Thank you. Love you, man. I love you, sir. Thank you. Morning, church. Um, first of all, I want to say uh, my wife got an opportunity to go visit and love on her family for a few days, so. Amen. Um, so praise God for that, right? And I know she's watching. She wanted to be here. It's a special day for us. Um, every, every lady that graduates, is, uh, it's amazing what God does. It really is. I'm so humbled when I watch um, what the Lord does in their lives from the moment they get to the ranch to they're at our home for a while and we get to love on them and and get to know them and their family and their their testimony is so powerful and uh, there's a lot of laughing and a lot of crying and a lot of crying. stuff going on more crying but uh before i introduce her um i hope my wife's having a great time i love you thank you for all you do in our home please um may the lord continue to bless her and antonio come on up Bring your family, bring the, the Lord's ladies, bring. And just for the record, I'm not the emotional one, so. <laughs> All right. Just bear with me for a second. I'm a little nervous, so. All right. Through all my failures and my shortcomings and my sinful living, I felt as if I was battling a war all alone. In my darkest hour, I clung to a false sense of comfort, a temporary fix that didn't even touch the ache that burdened my heart. On June 21st of 2011, I woke up to find my five-month-old son had passed while I slept. A part of me died that day right along with him. Since his death, <laughs> I have sought out a sense of relief, a remedy to my suffering, and it hurt my other babies in the process. Sorry, girl. I lashed out and ordered my life like there was no God. In a time of tragedy, I was trying to fight a fight only he could win, a fight that has already been won. I just needed to accept God and the love he had waiting for me. Well, funny enough, that Heavenly Father of ours has quite the sense of humor. And Nancy Cafferty is solid proof of that. <laughs> September 17th of last year, I met Nancy that Monday morning for the first time. For I was eight months pregnant, and this wonderful lady just so happens to be a jack of all trades. Not only does she run the Good Samaritan thrift store and handle fundraising for the program, but she also does private adoption. I wanted what was best for my son, even if I wasn't it. Right on. 
I had three weeks to find a perfect fit for the baby. So Nancy got a couple of families lined up for me to meet later on that week, but God had other plans. Three weeks dwindled down to three days when my water broke on Wednesday, September 19th. Nancy still worked diligently to make things happen and kept in contact with one of the potential families. Thursday, September 20th, baby was born via C-section um, three weeks early. So we had to stay in the hospital for a few days, which is where one of the potential families came to meet baby and I. So I took the couple to the NICU where they got to see baby for the first time. Words can't even express how amazing it was in that moment when they laid eyes on him. I knew instantly that they were the family for my beautiful baby boy. So I just want to say a huge thank you to Ben and Stacy Bowen, the Bowens. They stood up in the back. Um, they are now the adoptive family of my son. Thank you for loving my son just as much as I do. You guys are an amazing couple, and God shines right through you, and it's so beautiful. Thank you so much. So this is my baby. Um, it's Charlie, Charlie Roy Bowen. <laughs> um, thank you, Stacy, for being uh, an amazing mentor and for praying for me a husband. <laughs> I need all the prayer I can get. <laughs> uh, Joe and Mary Ann, thank you for opening your home to us ladies and for all you guys do. Thank you, Tori, Athena, and Ainge Bay, all the other facilitators, and thank you, Kara, for making some vital things happen while I was here. Rick and Brenda, I'm right there. <laughs> um, you, you two are amazing for taking your time and giving it to the ladies who don't get visits and for our blackout ladies. I especially enjoyed our guitar session and the Christmas uh, carols at the ranch. That was really right awesome. So um, thank you, Pastor Tim and Cindy, um, for uh, transforming lives and leading so many people that are lost and, uh, and giving them a loving and supportive family. I really appreciate that. Um, and speaking of family, my dad couldn't be here today, but I just want to say I love you, Dad, and I miss you so much. Um, and I'm so sorry for all the worry, disappointment, and hurt I have caused you through my addiction. Thank you for loving me through all my shenanigans. <laughs> Mama, you know I love you and I miss you, and I'm so proud of everything that you've been accomplishing lately. And to Cadence, my oldest daughter, um, none of my kids could be here today, so um, I love you. And Mama's really sorry for everything that I've done. And I will do so much, the best that I can to gain your, regain your trust and Kindle and Preston, same goes for you. I'm still here. I never abandoned you and I'm sorry that I've been absent, but I'm still here. I never stopped loving you guys. And I'm so proud of the little humans you guys are becoming. Um, Bonnie and Chuck, I love you guys. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Um, so throughout these... Four, uh, four months, one verse stuck with me. Let's see if I can remember it. It's Isaiah 61.3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. For on December 1st, my suffering um, became a blessing when I decided to dedicate my life to Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. I walked in ready for a change of heart. I'm walking out now with a renewed spirit, a new perspective, and an entirely new heart. Thank you, Lord. I'm now working full time, looking forward to the future, and I'm excited to see what the new day brings. Amen. Thank you. I love you. Praise the Lord. Nancy, you want to pray for her? All right, let's gather around her. I'm going to have Nancy pray for her. And I want to remind everybody, if you'll stand with us, I want to remind everybody, you see, every one of these people up here had a position in her life. Um, people out there that are on the streets and that are in their addiction, they don't have one of these, much less all of these, because they've cut the bridges. They've, they've cut them off. And so... They end up just couch surfing and going to place to place because they've literally wore out their families and everything. It's so important that the body of Christ comes around them just like this. So what a blessing. And to have 
boy, to have the people that adopted your, your baby here and to be a part of this, this is supernatural, folks. This is supernatural. So I'm going to have Nancy pray over you. We're all going to pray around it, but Nancy's going to pray. So. Yeah, he's funny looking, huh? <laughs> Say it again. Yeah, he's funny looking, huh, buddy? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Referring to me? Yeah, he was smiling at you. So. It's okay. He finally got a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Father God, we just so humbly come before you Thank today. You, Jesus. You are such a God of miracles, things that we can't even explain, things that we can't understand, certainly things that we cannot plan that you bring. And we thank you so much. You are a holy God, and we worship you. Lord, I thank you for each person who is here today. I thank you for this church. I thank you so much for Antonia Katie and her walk. She is now a light in this world. She has a testimony of who Jesus Christ is in her life, and she will share that with her family. She will share that with others, and Lord, she will make a difference for the kingdom. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for the facilitators. We thank you for the girls and guys who are in this ranch. We thank you for those whose lives are changing. We thank you for those who are still out on the streets and those who are struggling. Lord, bring them in. May the Holy Spirit just continue to work on them. And may we as a body of Christ continue to pray for them and lift them up to you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. 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 Could I get a picture with you? Amen. Man, I love you guys so much. So, and I'm so glad that you're here to worship with us this morning. But we have some guys that are graduating. And no, we have a lot of guys that are graduating. And I just want us to have a great time listening to the testimonies of these men. They're going to have to make it short and to the point. But I want you to listen to them because they have a testimony. And we have one very special type of testimony that's going to go on this morning too. So I want Brandon, I'm happy. I want you to come up and bring your family with you. There you go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm going to bring them all up first. Good to have you, brother. Okay. Jason Morton, come on up. Come on, Jace. Do you have any family here? All right. This is your family now? Okay. All right. Joel Raid. Come on up, Joel. Jay, come on up, Jay. Where's Jay Canny? Oh. Come on up, brother. You have any family here? Where are they? Come on up, you guys join him. He needs some support up here. And one that has a lot of people here this morning. So, Dewey Campbell, I want you to come up. I want the family to come on up and stand behind him. Dewey, why don't you come over here on this side? Plenty of room since you got a lot of family. Dewey's family, come on up and stand behind him. Do we need a chair up here for one of them? I get it. Okay. We'll have a chair up here waiting for. He's got one. She's got a stool there too. Boy, Dewey, you look like you brought the whole village. This is cool. Tribe, community, city. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah, we got a chair up here for her. That way she can just... All right. Okay, Brandon, you're going to go first. We want to know. We got to make it short and sweet. I apologize because there's a lot of you, but make it short and sweet. And I want to... What's God done for you? Okay? Love you, bro. 
Amen. How y'all doing? I only got three minutes, 47 seconds. So, uh, and uh, if y'all would, will y'all follow me in the Lord's Prayer? It's my favorite one. It sums up pretty much everything at once, you know. So, uh, thank you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. That was awesome. All right, so uh, I want to read this little thing here. I read it this morning. Talk in the mic. Oh, sorry. Yeah. This is uh, by Billy Graham. Above the den, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We Christians are not to be conformed to this world in the way that we think. The world is its advertisements, its conversations, and its philosophy is engaged in a gigantic brainwashing. Not always consciously, but sometimes unconsciously, the Christian is beset by secular and worldly propaganda, calling us to live for ourselves and to put things of selfish pleasures, pleasures ahead of God. The world's sewage system <clears throat> threatens to contaminate the stream of Christ through. However, above the den, we can hear the voice of Scripture. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that what is God, good and acceptable in the perfect will of God. Time yourself next time you read the Bible and pray. Compare it to the time you spend watching television and surfing the Internet. Is God getting his share of your time and attention? Is the world shaping your mind, or is Christ? Uh, before I came, I was really lost, and uh, I had actually been doing drugs a very long time, and I've never got a demon in me until here recently. And I'm from Texas, so it was so bad that God gave me not He took the spirit of fear from me, or, you know, the spirit of fear and love and a sound mind. So I got on an airplane and flew to Idaho with no family, <laughs> no money, you know, and the thrift store, thank God, furnished me for this program, which is surely amazing. I mean, y'all are all fishers of men, you know. I mean, y'all know where, where you, know, you know where the bottom is and what it looks like and what it feels like, you know. And uh, I was thinking, you know, I wouldn't want my little blonde-haired, blue-eyed teenage girl with a man like I was or my son right away in prison getting into gangs, fighting, selling drugs, cooking drugs, all that stuff that comes with this addiction. But we're, we're the fishers of men now, you know? I mean, look around, and we're the ones that can, you know, like Jesus said, he said, uh, I'm going to change the world, and he's still changing the world, you know? And we're his soldiers, so we can do it also. So all these guys right here are my family, you know? My family right here, I love y'all. They're watching me on YouTube because pretty good drive from here to Texas, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love y'all, and I thank y'all for making me feel like I'm at home, you know. So uh, this is an awesome church. Y'all are awesome, man. There's so much power here and love here, and uh, thank y'all. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Congrats, bro. Okay, Jason, you're up. Yeah. Tear it up, man. Is your family watching? Your family can always go on our, and they can watch it. Yes, sir. So, okay. Thank you, Pastor. You uh, Pastor said something earlier in a prayer that really hit me um, about uh, there are no other gods. We don't pray to uh, any other gods, but by Jesus Christ, that's how we get saved. And we're, I'm just thankful that um, when I was in my mess, that when I cried out to God, um, he heard me, Buddha's dead, Muhammad's dead, but... Jesus Christ, the Bible says, raised from the dead. That's right. And I'm just thankful that he hears my prayers. He, he heard my family's prayers. I was in such a mess that uh, I wasn't even really able to even pray for myself. I believe it was prayers from family and friends that got me here. Um, I was, uh, uh, sin, it just, it, it takes you uh, farther than you want to go. And we know that it'll keep you longer than you want to stay. And it costs much more than you want to pay. And I was just... Uh, at the bottom of the barrel, um, was able to get on a train and come here. Um, the Bible says that uh, the goodness of God will lead you to repentance. And when I got here to the set-apart home, I was just, uh, I was just loved. Uh, 
John Padula, he, he allowed me uh, to come back to the Set Apart House and start there, and um, somebody actually paid for my program. I just seen the goodness of God through, through so many people, and yes, I did repent, and I'm thankful that God, uh, he says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, and that's a fact. That's something that you can just rely on, and God, he doesn't lie. Um, I'm just thankful for my, for my life. Another chance to start over, and like uh, Brandon said, we're fishers of men. I believe that's what God's called me specifically to be, even though right I know he says it in the Bible, but he's, he's really telling me in, uh, as an individual cool. uh, to get out there and spread the gospel. So I'm just thankful I have a chance to do that. I'm thankful for my church family here, uh, the men in the home. Um, Stephen Hemming, what a great leader. He's a, he, he's not a, uh, he doesn't point his fingers around and tell you what to do. He serves the men, and that's just a... a he just shows the love of Christ. Uh, I want to thank all my brothers in the home, especially Steve Wood. Um, you fa this guy, he faced more adversity than I ever could have in one day. And, uh, and he took wise counsel, and, and his right faith on. in God got him through. So I just want to praise the Lord for uh, cool. that I have another chance. Thank you, Pastor, right for preaching the gospel. Good job. Mm -hmm. Proud of you, man. Okay. Uh, Jay, there he is. I love you, man. Tear it up. What's God done in your life? Well, he's, he set me free. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I got a little something here. Well, I'm blessed because I had a mom and I have a family who knows Jesus and sowed seeds of truth and hope in me at an early age. Um, in 2013, at the age of 52, my mom passed away from metastasized breast cancer. Although I knew she had gone home to be with Jesus and someday I'd see her again, I took it way hard. Uh, she wasn't just my mom, she was my best friend. Instead of accepting the fact that she was in heaven and finally at peace, I let anger and sorrow consume me. When I should have been running to Jesus, I ran to drugs and alcohol. Um, there was a rebellious spirit about me and I thought I needed to experience more life, which really meant I was going to have some fun by being as reckless as possible. I was chasing after something, running to something, and I didn't even know what it was. I wanted to have fun, but I just kept stumbling and getting hurt. Uh, it's hard to run in the dark. My rebellious spirit had gotten tired, and an uglier spirit of pride took up the race. I wasn't having fun, but I was still running, running away from the truth, running away from love and Jesus. The enemy had me convinced that I was all alone, that I was no good, and I was an embarrassment, that I was unlovable, and that I should just give up. I had become so broken and tired and hardened that I believed there was no hope left. Praise God for his love and mercy and grace. You see, with Jesus, nothing is too bad or too ugly and embarrassing. It says in the Bible, there is nothing new under the sun. Um, Jesus is right there at the door, knocking, waiting for me to open it. I had run away from a family who loves me and a brother who needed me, and I wound up in Salt Lake, strung out, eating with the swine out of the pig trough. It was there that I cried out to Jesus and with his help mustered up the courage to swallow my pride and call my grandma. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was so ashamed of myself, but just like the parable of the lost son, there was no shame or ridicule. Uh, she actually thanked the Lord for answering her prayers. Not just hers, but my whole family. Cool. Um, you see, I, uh, I thought I had to keep fighting harder if I wanted to succeed, but all I have to do is surrender to be set free. Thank you. Do you have anything you want to say to your family? I love you guys. Thank you. Thank you for praying for me. I love you so much. Okay. <laughs> right on. Good job, buddy. Okay, Joel, you ready? You rock. Thank you. Doing a good, good work, brother. Uh, thank you all for being here. Since I have to make this quick, I want to, I want to take advantage of this opportunity, try and kind of uh, trap myself, I guess, in the, uh, in the ministry, if I can. Um, I really honestly am terrified of, of the idea of just uh, of not only, you know, using drugs, you know, or getting into some type of terrible life, but even just a regular life that, that doesn't involve God and isn't uh, based around God and serving God. And... Uh, the best, the, the way that God speaks to me right now that I, 
I could do that best is to be involved in as, as many ministries and connect with as many people as possible. And uh, I don't know when the next time I'll have an opportunity to talk to this many people is. So um, I'd like to say I'm gonna, I don't, I'm sure it's not allowed for the next few days I'm in the program. Um, when I get out of the program on Wednesday, I'm gonna put my name, my name is Joel Raid. I'm gonna put my number, my address at the front desk. Um, <laughs> I really would love to have the support and help and the opportunity to help or support anybody that is willing. I'd like the information on any ministry that I can get involved in, and I would like to be involved in as many of those as possible, connect with as many of you as possible. And uh, I truly, I truly do need the love and support of every single one of you. Not a few, not just the leadership here, but every one of you. Thank you. <laughs> and you'll have it. Okay, Dewey, before you, before you uh, give your testimony, um, I don't know who's in control of all this, but before you give your testimony, they may want to do something too. So who do I, who do I give a mic to over here? Okay. Do you need a mic or you want to do it without it? We're okay without it. Okay. you guys too oh. that was his family singing blessed assurance in their native tongue so praise the lord <laughs> um thank you jesus today is my mom's birthday too <laughs> and uh, her favorite color is purple And um, I did a 
I did a uh, topical on colors of the Bible. And Joe Daniels is all like, what? What is this? Colors of the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> so I wasn't sure if I could say this, but it is in the Bible. Um, when I was fighting it and I was wanting to run away and I uh, was not wanting to work on things and I'm getting tugged in all these different directions, he grabbed me and stopped me. And um, I closed my eyes because I wasn't going to fight it no more. And I seen, seen blue. So I started hunting for it. And it's uh, the healing of the wounds. And I was just trying to find a way to honor you so my family could see you. That's Joe Daniels' mom, the little baby right there. <laughs> and um, he's a really good man. And the other man is Stephen Hemming. Right there. Um, he grabbed my hands and he knew something was going on and I'm being tough and I'm fighting it. He said, let's pray. So I prayed and I seen white, joyous, righteous. It's all healing. Different times come in and then this another man that set apart told me that he believed that everybody has the ability to heal with prayer. Jesus is in our lives, in my life. He's touched me greatly, and you men, a lot of men. AJ, I see you being crazy about Jesus. I understand now. <laughs> um, this is my best friend, Arby Shown, Pastor Arby Shown, growing up. This is a little girl. Praise the Lord. This is my daughter and my sister, my cousins and sisters and aunties. Vita, you didn't make it. It's my sister. There's three of us. There's four of us. Me, Arrow, Vita, Tiapo. But mom, uh, when we're little on the reservation, there's always a lot of churches around. And, well, we'd always sneak to those churches and there'd be uh, shut down or something. But there was a bell there. And uh, I think Vita, I don't think we could pull on it by ourselves. We were hanging on it. Finally, we pulled it. That was Vita. That, so it wasn't just me. And it was, <laughs> it was loud. And, it, and I was like, oh, we're getting a whipping for sure. We didn't go back there. And uh, that was my sister. So. And then um, all these things were happening. All these good things are happening. And it's uh, just believe it. It's Jesus. So. Uh, Due to time constraints, I better give it back. <laughs> I love you guys. Is there anything you want to say to your family? Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, um, it means a lot, so much for you guys to be here. Mom, I know you fought hard. You still do. And it's Jesus. My grandma Vita, the Bible. Brand, less, Auntie Bill, I remember when you told me that if you could take it away, you'd take it away. <sighs> this is Rob right here. He's the one that helped with that. And then there's other men over here. These men did a lot of work, and they're doing a lot of work, and they're... <sighs> there's no way that I could tell you except for do good, to honor you, Jesus. That's unbelievable. You guys are here, all the mean things that I've done. There's a guy that I've been wanting to be, and I know who he is, with Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Okay. Gentlemen that graduated, come on up here. Did we get everybody? Good. Come on up. Families, gather around them because we're going to pray for them. Now that they've been through the ranch, one of the most important things that we could do right now is, is pray over them hardcore because now they get to go out into the world and be a testimony. And sometimes that's a little difficult. Sometimes. <laughs> and thank you so much for singing. And we all recognize that, um, that tune, Blessed Assurance. So that's way cool. And so thank you for ministering the gospel and boy, I'll tell you, I'm just, I'm so happy that, especially on the reservation, it's so important that that gospel gets out there. So, amen. So now you get to, you get to be that for them. Amen. 
So, Father, I want to thank you for these men. I want to thank you, Lord God, for everything that they represent right here. They were lost, now they're found. They were blind, and now they see. They were crippled, they just didn't know it. They were walking dead, but they didn't even know it. Thank you for making them alive, Lord God. I pray that they'll be missionaries for Jesus. I pray, Lord God, that, that their lives would prove it out, Lord God, that they'll become servants of God, not lords over anything, not kings over anything, but they'll become servants of the Most High God. And I pray, Lord God, that they will walk with humility and they will walk humbly in your sight, Lord. I pray that you will bless them, bless their families, bless their children, and bless everything that they set their hands to do for you. Thank you, Lord God, for the leadership, Lord God, that blessed them the whole time that they were here. And I pray, Lord God, that they'll receive back, Lord God, again, all that effort that they put into them. The love will come back, Lord God, to them. And so, Father, may you be glorified by their lives today. So we, we love you and we thank you, Lord, as they leave this place to go out into the mission field, that you will empower them and fill them with the Holy Ghost to do so. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Love you guys.